Good morning, everyone. Great to see you out at the house of the Lord. We're going to get right into our service this morning. I see several visiting with us today. I'm Pastor David, and we're just delighted you've come to worship with us today on Friends and Family Day at Church Alive. And uh, wow, what a great, great day the Lord has in store for us this morning. I hope you received a bulletin today as you came in. If you did not receive a bulletin when we received the offering and the tithes in a few moments, if you'll just let the usher know, raise your hand, let the usher know as they come by and serve you, they'll be glad to get you a bulletin today. Make sure you have that before you leave. Amen. In the bulletin, there are several things that are coming up on our church calendar. We just want you to be on top of all the events that have been planned, all the announcements. Uh, we have, uh, of course, a Bible study. We've been in the book of Revelation uh, this last couple of months and on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Come on out and be a part of that. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us stand together today. I know you're fellowshipping, and it's hard to break off conversations, especially if you hadn't seen someone in a while, and I understand that. I tell you, the Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. If you're a guest here today, we're going to say some more about this, but we have something we've prepared that we would like for you to leave with today. It's just a, it's not a big item it's just a little gift bag some goodies in it we'd like for you to have on your way out and uh, there's a table set up in the back so when you leave a little later there'll be someone at the welcome table out in the uh, fellowship hall as you go out to the parking lot be sure to go by and get uh, your gift bag today we're just glad you're here we want you to feel loved and welcomed by the lord amen i mean he's ready to have church today Come on, let's give Jesus a hand offering of praise. Come on, church alive. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. How many will just lift your heart to the Lord? We've welcomed one another, but let's welcome the Lord in this place. Father, Hallelujah. in Jesus' name, we just open up our hearts. We open up our mind. Thank we open you, up all that we are to you today we just believe you're going to rent the heavens today we believe as we worship you and honor you and glorify your name through song through the word through prayer that father there's just going to be a tangible manifestation of god's presence thank you lord. it's going to fill this room today and before we leave i believe lord that people's lives will be touched People's lives will be changed. There'll be transformation take place in all of us here today. And we'll be moved from glory to glory to glory. We just thank you for that promise today. And we give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, before the worship team takes off, shake hands with somebody close to you one more time and tell them you're at the right place at the right time today. Amen. Let's worship. Thank you. 
Let me tell you about my best friend today. Let me tell you about my best friend today. Hallelujah. We have new friends today. We have old friends today. We have acquaintances. But let me tell you about my friend today. Hallelujah. There is no friend like Jesus today. Hallelujah. He's there closer than any brother, any sister, any friend, any neighbor. Today, he's with you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. Oh, Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. today. Thank you, Father. You are 
not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is.
that again. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, louder than the unbelief. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. Oh, my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Well, I run a sea in the middle of the Unbelief. 
I'm going to raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Just reach out and touch him as he walks by your place today. Do you worship him? I raise a oh, I raise a hallelujah. Oh, you hear the melody today, Lord. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praise. Amen, amen. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, church, because the king is alive. <laughs> Come on, amen. Raise a hallelujah to him. This morning, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was thinking this week, after last weekend, thinking about the power of our praise. How many knows there's power in your praise today? Amen. You could be seated this morning, hallelujah. Oh, I want to bless the Lord today got special needs in our church today we've been praying for and we keep a prayer list active in our church and we've been praying over many needs these last few days and weeks got a call this week many of you know uh, Judy Sadler's sister Carolyn Hedden uh, is in the hospital have some tests done even today, having heart, physical heart issues. How I many knows the Lord can touch our sister today in the name of Jesus? I want to pray for uh, Dr. Odd today. Good to have Carol here and Joyce. Let's remember Dr. Richard Odd. He's a great man of God. He needs a physical touch in his body today. Sister Lois Speed, we were able to visit her in the hospital on Friday and her and brother uh, Speed 
we're lifting them up to the Lord in prayer. She's battling uh, leukemia. But can I tell you something? The God that you and I serve today, He's greater than any sickness or affliction today. Come on, that's a good place just to give the Lord a shout of praise. Our praise is a weapon today. Amen. Raise a hallelujah to the Lord. There's others today that have needs. Those are just a few urgent things that came to my attention this week. And we're praying, like I said, over our prayer list. How many today just lift your hands and and just say, Pastor, today there's some special needs. Maybe it's in your life. Maybe it's in somebody you love dearly today. But you just believe in God for a touch today. Could you just slip your hand up and just say, I have needs today. I'm believing God. Or look, there's hands all over this room today. And the great thing about our God today is He's never too busy. Amen. He's always on time. I'm just glad God's never late to an appointment. Amen. He has a divine appointment, a divine agenda. He's always on time. And we want to take these things to the Lord in prayer today. Amen. Father, I just come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you hear our cries and you hear the prayers of your people. Father, today there are many things. You saw all the hands that were raised in this place. Lord, we just know the need is great, but we know that our God is greater today. You're greater than every need, every problem, every situation. And and I just think, thank you today, Lord, because the Bible says you inhabit the praises of your people. You're with us here today. In fact, as the praises and the worship have gone up toward heaven, the tangible presence of God has come down and sat down among us in this room. And we're so thankful that you're here today. You're not a God that's afar off. You're not a God that's, uh, Lord, just cannot be touched with the things we go through, but as Hebrew says, we have a high priest today. You're touched with the feelings of our needs, our infirmities, our, our battles, our storms, the things we face, our tests, our trials in life. And, and yet, Lord, we just thank you today because, Lord, you're just not touched, but you have not just empathy or compassion. You're able to extend yourself today hallelujah by your grace and by your mercy and by your presence and touch the needs today by the power of your holy spirit lord i just believe you for the impossible i believe you for the miraculous i believe you for the supernatural i believe whether they're in the hospital room or whether they're home or whether they're gathered somewhere today we don't even know about god wherever the need is we just believe even now your spirit is moving on their behalf and you're touching and you're healing and you're setting free in jesus name everybody just raise your hand up to the lord father we extend our hands by faith today and we just thank you and praise today lord we thank you because we believe you're moving now the answers are here we don't have to wait but god you said that they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall not walk in faint. Lord, I want to thank you because even in this service today, there's a renewing that's taking place. There's an uplifting that's taking place. As our hands are raised, Lord, you're lifting us up above any cloud, above any storm, above any trial, any test. And we just thank you, Lord, and we worship you, and we praise your holy name. And we pray it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Will somebody give the Lord a shout of praise today? Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, there's just a prayer and a spirit of intercession. Sweet, sweet spirit in this place. I just lift my hands toward heaven and pray. Just sense that in your spirit today. Come on, it's okay if we want to sing that to the Lord. Well, let's just pray.
I praise you in spite of it today. Let's lift. are getting ready and we're going to just continue to worship the Lord in the receiving of our tithe and our offering today again as I mentioned at the beginning of the service this is a special day for us we wanted to have a friends and family day and I know many were invited this didn't work out maybe for Sunday for them to be with us but for all of you that it did work out and that you came I want you to know we are thrilled you came to be a worshiper with us at church. Let's give all of our guests a great God bless you today. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jerry, I want you to come real quick. As I mentioned just a moment ago, we have a little gift for our families as you've come today. And he can give you some directions. They're back here. And we just want you to make sure now before you leave today, if you're a guest today, we want to send you home with something a little special. Well, good morning, church. Some of y'all hadn't had coffee yet. Good morning, church. You know, I'm that way sometimes. My wife will tell you I drink coffee like I do water, probably more than I do water. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, we ain't alone. I ain't alone, honey. We ain't alone, Jeremiah. You know, I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be here on Family and Friends Sunday. And I like to bring Jeremiah up with me as often as I can because I'm blessed that I have a family. Amen. You know, sometimes we can look around and we can find all kinds of things to be upset at. I mean, we can turn on the TV and find five good things to be upset at. But you know what I do? I look around. I look around and I thank God for what I have. I thank God I have a place to lay my head. I got food to eat. I got eyes to see and maybe a sniffly nose to smell. But you know what? It still works pretty good. And so when I start to think about what God's done for me, and this morning I want to encourage you, to know that you're blessed. You're here on a Sunday morning. You might have had some aches and pains. Key word might have. But I believe the Lord will heal you of that. You might have come in and it just might not been, like pastors say, might not been, you know, the best start to a Sunday. That's okay. It's God's day anyway. Amen. So here's what I want to encourage you. If you're a guest, would you see me and my beautiful wife and my lovely son at the welcome desk after service? We got a special gift for you. And uh, I think you'll like it. We've got some church live gear in there. And uh, we just want to give you a kiss from heaven. No pun intended because there's a Hershey kiss in there. A couple of them actually. And uh, we just want to welcome you and make you feel alive. And You, you got something you want to say? No? Because that's your Papa and Gigi back there. Well, would you give our guest a round of applause and just a big God bless you. God bless you this morning and thank you for being with us. And I'm going to turn this back over to Pastor. Thanks, Pastor. And Lagonda has something she wants to um, 
give everybody today that uh, to, uh, thank everybody she can tell you better but we have a um, saying around here at church alive that we're where our goal is to be a church with heart. How many believes we need to be a people with a heart for God and a heart for people and love God and love people? We're, we want to be a church, and that's, that's our thing today around here. We want to be a church of heart. We pray about that, and our vision is centered around that. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of hurting hearts today in this world. There's a lot of hearts that need mending and broken. All of us have been there before, but thank the Lord. How many is glad Jesus has mended and touched your broken heart? Amen. And we want to help others along the way, and we want to have be a church of heart. So, Lagana, do you want to say anything at all about that? No, you've said it. <laughs> I've said it. We're going to receive the offering, and then she's going to hand these out. And uh, don't leave without your little heart. It's just a little reminder uh, that Jesus has a heart for you. And he's calling us all to have a heart back to him. Thank you for being faithful. Everybody say faithfulness. God loves cheerful giving. It's more blessed to give than receive. We have, uh, I tell you, God is just, he's just blessed us so much. And this is an opportunity for us to support the ministry here at the church and to support the kingdom of God. We, we might not win them all, but we can win all all that the Lord will put us in contact with and give God all the glory and praise for it. Amen. And we want to be a viable part of winning the lost in the city of Louisville and in the areas around us. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness. Father, I just praise you. Thank you for time of giving. Thank you for good stewardship. Uh, and Lord, uh, thank you for uh, the principle of your economy that reminds us that no matter how we give back unto you, it always comes back. That's not our motivation for giving. It's just the part of your plan. It's God's economy in our lives. And so we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We want to continue to try our best to be faithful to you. Bless the gift. Bless the giver today in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. God bless you. God bless you. And let's continue to worship the Lord. Pastor Doug's coming, and we're going to worship the Lord in song. Amen. This song has been requested, and I've only sung this here once. Don't sing a whole lot sing a lot of songs. Used to, but not a whole lot anymore. Amen. But this is an old, old song. Anybody that you can go free. Amen. Listen to the words this morning. In a prison and throw away the keys, take away the vision from these eyes that now. Now can see deprived.
me of the food I eat Even by my hands and feet But as long as I know Jesus Then I can still go free that I could still go free what kind of man would reach down his hand and do Not fit to care, but a man on the cross, he put me in his will and said that I could stay. I don't understand why a king would want to leave his throne to don the robe of an earthly man feel the pain of flesh, flesh and bone. Then to the a child that lonely path. Stains, they broke all my chains that I I can still go free. would reach down his hand and do this for me unworthy to live not fit to care but a man he put me in his will and said that I could still go free. Then a man on the cross, he put me in his will and said that I give the Lord another shout of praise. Amen. We're free today. Amen. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Wow. The Lord is so good. Can we stand for the reading of God's Word today? If you have your Bible, 
You can go with us to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. And if not, they're going to put it up here, I think, on the screen for us as well. Jesus, during his earthly ministry on this earth, on different occasions, found the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee in a storm. This is one such occasion here. In Mark, the fourth chapter, being at, at verse 35, Scripture reads, In the same day when the even was come, he, talking about Jesus, says unto them, his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. He's talking, referring there about Jesus. Jesus was in the back of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And so they went and they awakened him, and they said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? You don't have to answer this question. It's a rhetorical question, but has there ever been a time in your life where you had such a question burning in your own heart? Jesus, do you really care? Are you there, Jesus? That was what was burning inside of them at this moment. But as we read the rest of the text, the Bible says that Jesus got up, verse 39, he arose and he rebuked the wind and he said unto the sea, peace, be still. Anybody glad you know the peace speaker today? And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him hallelujah father one more time i just thank you lord because you're still master of the wind you're master of the sea you're master over every one of us in this room today and you care for us. I pray let there be a wisdom of a spirit of wisdom and revelation come into this room right now, Lord, that as the word of God goes forth, Lord, it will not return void, but it will accomplish the task that it is set forth to do today. And Lord, that you will allow us all to have ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking to us individually and also corporately today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness in our life we thank you for this word today in Jesus name I pray and everybody said amen you can be seated again thank you it was evening and Jesus pronounced the words to his disciples after ministry after teaching on the seashore of Galilee you read the prior chapters to this chapter in Mark 4, you'll see Jesus was doing what Jesus did while he was on the earth. He was healing the sick. He was Peter's mother-in-law. He was uh, cleansing the unclean. He was doing the miraculous. And he also taught the people, and he would teach them. I was privileged one time to uh, go and be a part of a Holy Land experience, a Holy Land tour one of the things that the tour guide reminded us of was that it was not anything unusual for Jesus to get in a boat, to get in a ship, and to cast out a little bit from the shoreline. And as the multitudes of people would come and hear his teaching, there was no public address system back there. There was no microphones, no sound system. But Nature in of itself, the way the mountains encompassed around the Sea of Galilee, the way the seashore 
would line up. It would make almost a natural amphitheater type echo as he would teach from the boat just a little piece off of the shoreline back to the shore and his voice would carry an echo and be able to be heard by the people. He had been doing ministry like this and the scripture teaches us this morning that he came to a place in the day, it was evening, there had been uh, many things that had been accomplished but yet he told his disciples the time has come for us to pass over to the other side. God always has a purpose and a plan for our lives. Can I hear an amen today? He always has a road map. He always has something that he's leading us to, guiding us to. We may not always know it. We may not always understand it. We may not always recognize it at that particular instant. But the fact is that he is in control. He's all-powerful. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's all-knowing today. And as Jesus was here ministering, Jesus had a purpose for them to go to the other side. Just like Jesus has a purpose for your life and mine today. You can look back on your life this morning and maybe you can count many blessings from the Lord. Maybe you can count different struggles that you've gone through, trials and tests. But I can promise you this much, no matter how bad things have been or no matter how great things have been, you can look out over the horizon and know that God has a destiny plan for your life today. Hallelujah. God had a great destiny for his early followers. Jesus knew what he was doing when he said, let us pass over to the other side. So they shipping. Today I want to talk about storm stories. Storm stories. A couple of weeks ago we saw a hurricane that came through the Bahamas. And what disaster, what devastation, what a powerful storm came through the Bahamas. It, it skirted Florida and up the Carolinas, but we've seen the devastations that sometimes storms can cause, the collateral damage, the pain, the sorrow, the calamity, the death. And while that's a physical storm, the point of this account here today is that there are storm stories that all of us here today that have been living any amount of time can probably look back and declare that we have gone through a time of testing. We have gone through a trial. We have gone through a storm at some point in our life. Can I tell you this today? The same Jesus that we read about just now that got the disciples from one side of the shoreline of Galilee through the storm to the other city along the Galilee seashores. Can I tell you that Jesus is still alive today. He's still real today. And he's still the one that speaks peace, be still. And he's still the one this morning that calms the storm storms uh, and brings us through the storms of life. Oh, if you're thankful about it, would you just join me and just give the Lord praise if he's ever brought you through a storm? We've all got a storm story to tell of some sort, I'm sure. And today, the disciples were no different as we read in the scripture. You know, the fact is, we're all in three places today. We've either come through recently a storm we're either about to go into a storm or we're in a storm because the fact is as long as we dwell in this robe of flesh and we live on this place called earth if you live long enough from time to time adversity is going to come can i get a witness today 
Problems are going to come. A trial is going to come up. Something in life is going to suddenly come up. Another thing about the seashore or the, or the Sea of Galilee that was interesting is because of the mountain range, because it's more like a lake, actually, when it's width and it's breadth and it's, and it's width, and, and, and it's not that really that large of a body of water, but the, the, they will tell you to this day that storm clouds can appear very suddenly, and they can appear out of nowhere. In one moment, everything can seem calm. The breeze can be calm. The waters can be calm. But then, because of the geographical location, suddenly the tempest can begin to blow. The clouds can suddenly move in. And before you know it, on the seashore, on the seas of Galilee, you can be going through a storm and the boat can be tossed just like it was on this evening. A storm can suddenly come out of nowhere. Isn't that a lot like the lives that we live in this life today? Sometimes we're walking and everything seems calm. Everything seems fine. Everything seems peaceful. Everybody's healthy. The job's good. I got a car in the driveway. I got food on my table. But then suddenly, unexpectedly, out of nowhere, there's a phone call. There's a note. There's a report. There's an event. There's something that happens. Happens, and before you know it, you're walking through a storm, and sometimes it's a storm unlike anything you've ever had to go through. Like I said, maybe you just came out of that kind of situation. Maybe you're in that situation today. Maybe a situation like that, God forbid, hey, awaits you and I out in our future. But I've come with a word from the Lord today, and the word of encouragement to us this morning uh, is there's no other friend. Uh, like Jesus today. Uh, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, closer than a blood relationship, closer than any relationship on this earth. Uh, and if you have Jesus in your life, uh, if you've invited Jesus into your heart, uh, if he lives within you, uh, let me tell you something, he's never going to leave you. He's never going to abandon you. He's never going to forsake you. I don't care what the storm looks like. I don't care what the cloud law with somebody help the pastor I don't care what the thing looks like he's still in your boat today he's still in your life today he's still in your vessel today and he's still declaring peace be still oh, I think there's another place right there to just give a praise break to the Lord come on church alive is he the one in your life today Oh, he's in the boat. You know, sometimes I think we allow the enemy to whisper and to confuse us and distract us in this life, even as a believer sometimes, where we forget who's in the boat. Come on now. But I come to tell you and remind you today that there's somebody... If you've accepted Jesus into your heart and life, if you're walking with him and he's walking with you, let me tell you something. He's not going to leave you like an orphan. He's not going to leave you motherless or fatherless. He's not going to leave you, amen, and forsake you. But just like he was with his disciples, it's a lesson for us today. Let the storm clouds come. Let the, let the trials come. Let the tests come. You just remember, I've got Jesus in the boat. I've got Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. And he still has the power and the authority over the wind, over the sea, and over everything in my life. Hallelujah. They were brought off guard by the suddenness of the storm. And that's the way life is sometimes. The suddenness of life. This was a unique event. The Bible says that the storm was very severe. The phraseology of the King James Version says, So that the ship was now full. The boat was taken in water. They, the disciples were frightened. Now, mind you, they had seen Jesus do some miraculous things already. But yet, Jesus, the Bible says, was carefree. He was in the back part of the boat. 
And the Bible, your Bible says that Jesus was sleeping. I thought about that. Jesus asleep in the storm. You know, he was the one that said, let's go over to the other side. Can I tell you, sometimes if we're not careful, we'll get our eyes so much on the problems around us that we'll forget about the promises of God. He said, I'm going to lead you to the other side. And that was the promise, but yet they were panic-stricken. If you look up the word that says they were afraid and fearful, it, it gives you the word picture that the disciples were in a panic mode. They were having a panic attack. They knew Jesus was with them, but Jesus is asleep. He's, he's got a pillow. Amen. By the way, he didn't have my pillow. Help me now, church. I don't know who that guy is. I've seen him interviewed a few times. He needs to become a member of Church Alive. Come on. Because there's no telling how many my pillows he has sowed. I don't know what kind of pillow Jesus had. I just know they were panicking. They thought something's got to give, something's got to happen. And so they go back and they awaken him. The boat's taken on water. Yeah, they feel like they're going down for the last time. And they say, Jesus, here, here's the panic in their voice. Jesus, don't you even care? Don't you even know? Don't you understand what is happening? Did you know sometimes it's in the middle of the storm? And, and don't sit there today like you don't, you don't, you, you've never been here. You've never gone through this. If we were all transparent today, we've all been in this before. We've all been in this storm before. We've all had that fear and that quiver and that panic hit our voice. Uh, and we've been getting the question Jesus are you hearing my prayers uh, Jesus do you not care for my family do you not care about my situation but oh I'm reminded of what Paul told Timothy he said listen Timothy one thing you're going to have to learn as a young convert and a young minister for God uh, is that the spirit of the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love uh, and of a sound mind uh, and when you can't see your way out it uh, you can't see your way around it. You can't see your way over it or under it. Uh, let me tell you what you can stand on. You can stand on the promise of God. Uh, you can stand on the word of God today. He said, I'll get you to the other side. My friend, if Jesus gave you a promise, uh, stand on that promise today. Uh, God's faithful uh, to his word. God's faithful to his word. Jesus got up and he's all calm. They're panic-stricken. And he rises up. And the wind's blowing. The boat's rocking. The water's filling up the boat. And he says this phrase, Peace, be still. Now, if you follow the narratives of the Gospels, you'll soon discover that Jesus, they said, was unlike other rabbis. He was unlike other teachers. He was unlike other uh, religious people. He was unlike the scribes or the Pharisees of his day. They taught as someone that felt they had authority. But it said that when Jesus taught... He taught as one having power and authority. See, Jesus didn't just read it out of the book. Jesus was the book. Jesus didn't just know the Word. He was the living Word. 
He didn't just have to open up the book of Isaiah, though he did, and quote from it in the synagogue. He was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah when he declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to give sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the gospel to the poor, the acceptable year of the Lord. No wonder he taught as one having power and authority. He was the living word. He was the refuge. He is our safety net. He is our rock. Oh, somebody ought to praise him today. He is our high tower of strength. He is our alpha. He is our omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the light and morning star. He is the lily of my Does anybody know who he is today? He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, I want to seek him today when I'm in the storm, when I'm in the sunshine. I want to seek him because I know who he is today. He's the master. He teaches. He moves what he taught. He confirmed with the miraculous. Yet his miraculous brought confirmation to the things that he taught. Wow, what a story. He said, peace, be said, what a storm story. You know, today, people face all kinds of storms. They face physical storms. In our prayer time today, I mentioned a few people. They're going through a physical storm as far as they're going through a sickness or they're facing a disease or a problem physical in the physical realm with their life. Hey Amen. Anybody thankful? Jesus knows how to say peace be still to the physical storms in life. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm speaking to here today, but I'm just going to tell you this. Jesus is not only master over the wind and the sea, and not only do they obey him, but because of the cross of Calvary, you hear me today, he's master over your life and my life, and he's master in our body, our physical realm. The Bible says that we, they took Jesus out to the whipping post. Uh, they took a whip, uh, and they've and they whip the flesh right off the backside of Jesus. Amen. And the blood begin to spill. And Peter comes along and, and he re reaffirms what Isaiah prophetically said. And he said that by the stripes laid upon the back of Jesus, we are healed. Uh, can I tell you, for every stripe, uh, I believe Jesus was purchasing our healing. Hallelujah. Maybe that one was for cancer. Uh, maybe that one was for sugar diabetes. Uh, maybe that one was for blood pressure problems. Uh, maybe that one was for broken bones. Uh, maybe that one was for physical things uh, that we can't even think about today. I don't know, but all I know is that with every stripe laid upon his back, uh, Jesus purchased uh, my healing today. Uh, and today uh, there's still healing uh, through the atonement and blood of Jesus. Peace be still. The word peace, that phrase peace be still is a word picture. That simply means this, to cease any more activity or to lock in place or the other word picture is to muzzle, to put a muzzle on something. Now let's be transparent here a minute, bring this home here in just a second, but listen, there's some storms in life that I've walked through and I can't blame them on anything else or anybody else except me. Because I made some bad decisions. Hey, Mom, I preach at the right place here today. Some wrong choices. And thank God I'm a little wiser now. I just had a birthday. Thank you. Praise God. But especially younger in my life, and even today, let's be real about it. Sometimes we can 
bring things on our own selves because of a poor choice. Then there are some storms that come upon us and we didn't ask for them, but they were things that God allowed to take place in our life because, like Job, it was a testing time and God always has things to teach us whenever we go through a storm story in our life. See, you know, God's not like a teacher today, and thank God for teachers. You know, they'll use books and research and graphs and charts and chalkboards. Those are part of the trade, part of the craft, PowerPoint today and teaching. But I've come to learn that the lessons that I learned the deepest and impact my life the greatest are not things that God teaches me on a graph or chart, although all those things are helpful, but my deepest lessons in life have been taught and I've learned sometimes the hard way, but I've learned them through a storm story in my life, a trial, a testing period. How many is glad the Lord loves us enough that He teaches us? through all the experiences that we have in this life. And then let's be real. There's some storms today. They're just attacks from Satan. They're just attacks from the enemy. Spiritual warfare. And if you've served God or tried to serve God any amount of time... I'm certain you have experienced an attack from the enemy. Jesus said in John chapter 10, The thief cometh not but to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come, Jesus said, that you might have life, and that what? You might have it more abundantly. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you see, sometimes the enemy will attack. This, I believe, on the Sea of Galilee, though it was in the natural, I believe, represented a spiritual attack. Because Jesus had said, ah, let's go to the other side. There's ministry for us on the other side. There's people that need healing for us on the other side. If you read through it, when they got over to the other side, the Lake of Gennesaret, sure enough, there was ministry that took place. But, but you know, the enemy would love to abort the work of God. The enemy would love to abort the plan of God in your life, in my life, and sometimes he will plot, amen, and he will devise a scheme or a storm and, and try to attack us in that, in that scenario. But when I can, when, let me tell you something today, church, when the devil has a plot, God has a plan. Can I get a witness this morning? God had a plan for his disciples. Uh, God had a plan. It wouldn't be that they would sink to their death in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. No. The plan was Jesus would rise up in the middle of their storm and he would speak, peace be still, and there would be a muzzle put on that storm. That storm would cease immediately. Uh, the boat would be spared. Their lives would be spared. Uh, and they would look at one another and say, my goodness, I've never seen a, a manner of man like this before. How many know today when Jesus comes to our aid, uh, he deserves all the glory, all the praise, uh, and all the honor. Hallelujah. Lock it in place. Muzzle it. The, the word picture is it's like an ox. They, the one definition was you put a muzzle so they don't eat the corn, the seed, that they're treading out for. See, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to destroy the seed so it can't produce the harvest. Hmm? If they could just get us a little bit knocked off balance or pushed back a little way or 
are kind of off our, our game, our A game, because of this storm, this, this, this thing that's arised suddenly. We weren't expecting it, but it came, uh, and now we're, we're sort of unstable. We're kind of wondering, oh, do you care, Jesus? Are you really there? Uh, uh, don't you know what's happening? Can't you see we're going down for the last time? But I love the word picture. He didn't just say, well, you better start bailing out the water. No. He didn't say, well, give it some time. It'll pass. No, he said, peace, uh, be still. Uh, and supernaturally, miraculously, he calmed the wind, he calmed the storm, uh, and Jesus brought a deliverance. Uh, I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I'm telling you today, God is still a God of miracles. Uh, Jesus paid the price at Calvary's Hill, and today, no matter what the storm is, what the attack is, uh, plead the blood of Jesus. Uh, he still has all power. And all authority in your life today. Oh, glory to God. Ha. Huh. Thank the Lord. He ceased. And he locked up that storm. He put a muzzle on it. And I can just imagine all of a sudden the sun came through. All of a sudden, there was this great calm. Peace. Anybody thankful today? Jesus has spoken peace to your life. Your situations, your life. It's a song we used to sing and said, I'm glad I know the peace speaker. Yes, I know him by name. I know the peace speaker. He can calm the storms and waves. When he says, Peace, be still. They have to obey. I'm glad I know the peace speaker. And I'm glad he knows me. hope not in your future but life sometimes brings relational storms what do you mean pastor sometimes that's stormy relationships in a person's life maybe a stormy marriage or a broken family relationship maybe that's an injured or an abusive or hurtful relationship at work or on the job or Sometimes stuff can just suddenly come up from out of nowhere. Maybe you've encountered or maybe today somebody's facing a financial storm. A loss of income, a loss of job. Maybe some poor decisions on your part. But finances can quickly spiral out of control and the weight of debt and the lack of funds and poor management can bring a stormy season in a person's life. Let me tell you, I know a peace speaker. And he still says, peace be still. There are storms of sorrow and grief, the lost scene of a loved one. The storms of suffering. Maybe you have a loved one you're a caretaker for today. And you're in the middle of that storm. Jesus is in your boat. And he says, peace be still. There's spiritual storms. There's no storm like the storm of sin. When sin enters our hearts, it always comes in as a pleasant, calm breeze. The devil is a deceitful person. He's a deceiver. And sin is deceptive. Sin promises a pleasant, calm breeze. It promises us the best. But sin will soon display its darker side. And sin will rip through someone's life, leaving a trail of damage and destruction that can only be repaired 
by the blood of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins. That's a good place to say amen right there. If you're facing a storm of addiction, a storm of sin, a storm of spiritual degree today, let me tell you something. You're at the right place because at Calvary, Jesus still invites us all Though millions have come, there's still room for one to come and give your life to God. Let me tell you something. He'll speak peace, be still, not only to the storm of this world. He'll speak peace, be still to the storm of your heart today. No peace like the peace of God that passes all understanding. He muzzled it miraculously. And when he did, they got over to the other side. Now this wasn't the only storm story in the scripture. If you read your Bible a little later in Mark, and it's also recorded in Matthew 14, I believe, that one time the disciples were out on a ship and this storm story was that the waves came and Jesus was on the hill praying. But he knew his disciples were in trouble. It was the fourth watch. And the Bible says that when Jesus came to their help, he came out walking on the water. You've read that story, I'm sure. At first they thought, well, it's a ghost. It's a silhouette. It, we're not sure what that is coming toward us. Again, fear gripped their hearts. But Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, do not be afraid. Be of good cheer. How many is glad for the words of comfort that come from Jesus? And this time the storm story deviated a little different than the last one in the fact that Jesus didn't say, peace, be still. He came right out in the middle of their trouble of the storm and Peter made the infamous statement he said Lord if that's really you if that's your voice bid me to come and Jesus said come Peter and Peter got up out of the boat now I know sometimes Peter takes a hard hit by some people when you read the text because they think well Peter sunk he got his eyes off Jesus yes he did but let's about it as far as I can tell he was the only one that had the courage and the faith to take a step out of the boat to begin with and he comes walking to where Jesus is. and then you know he got his eyes off Jesus he started to sink and he cried out Lord save me save me you don't have to answer this, but if you ever been in the middle of something and you didn't have the words to speak, you didn't have the time to get a big theological prayer together, but all you could just do is just do like Peter and say, I'm in trouble. Please, Jesus, save me. Please, Jesus, help me. And suddenly Jesus took Peter by the hand and he raised him up and he led him back to the boat. Uh, and they looked at one another and they said, we've never seen anybody like this before. And on that occasion, Jesus didn't say, peace, be still, and cease the storm. But Jesus came walking out in the middle of their storm. And he went through the storm with them. I come to tell somebody today, Jesus loves you so much that sometimes, in a miraculous way, he'll speak, peace, be still, and he'll calm the storm. But then there's other times when he doesn't choose the storm but he chooses to calm his child in the middle of the storm and if he has to he's willing to walk out on the water to get where you're at to let you know you'll never have to face anything in this life alone and he's in this room today how many know he's right here with us today won't you stand with me all in this room hallelujah Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads with Pastor here just for a second? Holy Spirit, I thank you for your goodness and your grace in our life. I thank you for this day today. Lord, I, I just sense, Lord, you wanted us to be reminded 
about the friend that is like another, any other friend in our life. Jesus, you're the greatest friend a person could ever have. You walk with us. You talk with us. And you're even with us in the middle of the storms of life. Even the storm story. Lord, maybe there's someone here today and they're facing a storm. Even now, Lord, I pray they can just sense Jesus rising up in their heart and their life and their spirit and saying, peace be still. Maybe there's someone here today, Lord, they just came out of a place of trial and test. God, just continue to strengthen them in this service today. Grace them with your power and your presence and your authority. Who knows, Lord, I... I'm not predicting anything, but I just know how life sometimes can happen suddenly. And maybe there's a suddenly awaiting our life this week. Lord, if by chance suddenly comes along our path, let the words of this message ring clearly in our spirit to know that you're with us and you speak peace be still and and you walk on on the water and you're never going to leave us alone in our time of need you're with us today hallelujah i want you to look up at me one time this week as i was praying about this you know it's great to think about Jesus being with us in the storm. But at issue today is this. If he's going to be with me in the storm, I need him in my life today. And maybe everybody here today You've accepted Jesus in your heart and life. I pray that's the case. But if by chance you're here and you need to accept Jesus or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, you're not here by accident. But the Holy Spirit is drawing and He's moving. And He's here today to receive you with His grace and His love. It's so easy, you know, just to begin a walk in a relationship with the Lord. It's so easy. You just thank the Lord for what He did for you on the cross and you receive that work in your life put your faith and trust in him that's what walking with God is it's just trusting the Lord and then as you trust him every day stay in the word somebody say stay in the word stay in the spirit and he is going to lead you and grow you and and take you to places you've never experienced before in your walk with God that's how much he loves you today But this week when I was thinking about this, the Holy Spirit reminded me of something. We've been talking a lot about praise and worship in our church. And I said, now, Lord, help me understand again the key to this. And this is what he spoke to me by his spirit. He said, you know, it's like Erica when she was small. And she was learning to walk. And I don't know if you've seen a toddler before, but sometimes when they start taking those first steps, they, they lose their balance. They get tossed. They, they're unsure. They're unstable. They're, they're wobbly. But the Holy Spirit reminded me that my daughter, when she was getting to the age of taking those first steps, the one thing that would steady her steps, the one thing that always brought something stable to her as she was walking those first times in her life, is she would do this. It was the cutest thing. She would take her arms and she'd hold them up. And just holding those arms up brought stability to her feet and it was like a counterbalance to all the wobbleness and it's just and of course I loved it because when she would do that I'd be on the other side of the room and I'd be going you know couldn't wait and then 
that she'd just fall into my arms. And I'd say, you did it, sis. You did it, sis. Let's do it again. Here she go. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of that today and this week. And, and He said, you've got to remember that the things that stabilize us is when we put our arms up and our hands up and we worship me and you worship my, my will and you, and you let the Holy Spirit into your life. Hallelujah. Oh, if you want your feet to be sure. Amen. Make sure your hands are raised. Uh, be sure your arms are lifted. Uh, not just physically, but through your heart. Make sure you're praising Him. Make sure you're worship in Him. Oh, when your, when your worship goes up and your praises go up, guess what? Holy Spirit settles your walk. Hallelujah. And you're able to go further than you thought you could. And you're able to stand up taller than you thought you could. And one of these days, by God's grace, Jesus is coming back to this earth again. And we're going to fall into the arms of our Savior and our Master. Oh, one more time. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, in closing today. How many will lift your arms to the Lord? How many will lift your hands to the Lord? I don't care what the storm may be you're facing. I don't care what the trouble is you've had to walk through. This is a time and an opportunity for somebody to praise your way through it. Uh, somebody to glorify Him. Uh, let Him settle your steps. Uh, let Him bring a balance to your life. Uh, let Him bring healing today uh, as you praise Him. Uh, He's going to rise up in your boat. He's going to declare peace. Be still. Come on, church alive. Praise Him today. We've got time to praise. Woo! You never stop. See? Hallelujah. If you're here today as we're singing this and you just want special prayer, amen, I want you to come and we're going to pray in closing. Just keep singing it, Lagonda. Just keep singing it. Amen. Pastor Dwayne, I want to pray for Carolyn today. Down here, we're going to close with this prayer here. Hallelujah. Rhonda, is she still in here? Promise keeper. She slip out. Somebody I'm come and stand for lowest speed. Come on. TM, somebody that else come and stand in. You are. Hallelujah. Who else wants to come and have your feet steady today? Come on, who else wants to come today? Just invite Jesus to speak peace. Be still today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This altar's open. This is the moment. This is what you've been waiting on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Who else will come? Maybe you want to stand in for somebody that you know that needs a financial breakthrough or they need a spiritual breakthrough or they need a physical Even when I don't feel Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Carol, do you mind if I pray with you working. for Dr. Odd today? You never stop. We want to you believe never the Lord. Stop Who else? Even Amen. Who else? I don't see it Hallelujah. There's a friend today Even that's here. I We've all come with our friends and our family today. But there's no greater friend than we have today in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want all the working. ministers that are here, all the pastors mm -hmm. to come down. Diane, I want you to come help us pray. Joe, Brother Webb. Brother Kenny, who else? Pastor Doug's down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jerry, take that oil. Get the pastors and ministers. Come on, we're going to, everybody extend your hand up this way. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit's doing something right now in this room. Hallelujah. We got to take at least we make three or four miracle minutes here. We're worker, just going to pray. Promise in closing keeper, the day. Light in my Hallelujah. darkness, Hallelujah. my God. Hallelujah. That is who you are. Father in Jesus' name. Waymaker, yes. miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my 
my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Come on, church, press in just a little more. Just a little more. Holy Spirit's doing something. Holy Spirit, you're doing it. You're doing it, Lord. Waymaker, you're doing it, Lord. Hallelujah. Father's not by power, it's not by might. But it's by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. By your even spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Even when I don't see it, you're yeah, working. Even when I don't yeah, feel it, you're working. working. You never stop. Ooh, you never stop glory. working. You never stop. Glory. You never stop working. Glory. Even when I don't see glory. it, you're working. Even glory. when I don't feel it, you're working. You Jesus. never stop. You never stop working. Jesus. You never stop. You never stop working. Oh, Waymaker, miracle worker, in Jesus, mighty name. Light Touch in my God. darkness, my God. That Touch is my brother who from the top are. of his head, out of the soles of his feet. Touch Carol today, Lord. Waymaker, miracle worker. Rise up and declare peace, be still. Light in my darkness, peace, be still. my God. That is who you are. Yeah, Baba Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in my darkness, my God. That is who you are. Glory, glory. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in my darkness, my God. That is who we maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are. We maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are you are here moving in our midst i worship you i worship you you are here working in this place i worship you i worship Promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in my darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, Promise keeper, light in my darkness, Hallelujah. my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We yes, yes, yes. Worker, Come on, church, keep praying, keep praying, keep, praying, keep believing. Let faith God, rise, let faith rise, let faith rise, are. let faith rise. Let the enemy be scattered today. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. of my enemies I raise a hallelujah 